During deep sleep, our neuromuscular input decreases, but our pharyngeal dilator muscles keep the airway patent. However, in some people, there can be transient episodes of collapse or a near collapse, which can result in development of apneic episode. The usual sites are gonna be soft palate, tongue base, or the lateral pharyngeal wall. The bad news is that the apneic episode can result in a bradycardia and a decrease in the heart rate. And post apneic episode, the heart would be racing due to a sympathomimetic surge. So these wide fluctuations of heart rate is gonna cause a lot of stress on the heart. This explains the fact that why do we have a high incidence of sudden death in sleep in patients of obstructive sleep apnea. So if you know somebody who's having hypertension, which is difficult to control in spite of three classes of antihypertensive drugs, or is having a new onset atrial fibrillation, or or is having a gain of weight or is having excessive daytime sleepiness then it means that the person needs to be tested for obstructive sleep apnea and the investigation that we're gonna do is polysomnography the narrowing of the airway causes loud snoring and the spouse of this person is gonna say that I feel as if there's a tractor running in the house. Now don't be under impression that OSC is gonna be seen only in obese people. It can also be seen in very thin and skinny people, especially people with craniofacial dysmorphism. The test we're gonna do is polysomnography. EEG would be done to demonstrate cortical arousal. We'll be doing a EOG to demonstrate the phase of sleep, ECG to find out the fluctuations in the heart rate. That's a bradycardia and a tachycardia electromyography, oxygen saturation, chest and abdominal movement, and nasal airflow monitoring is done in the polysomnography to diagnose OSA. Let us now learn to grade the severity of obstructive sleep apnea. Mild is when there is 5 to 14 episodes per hour. If it's gonna be 14 to 29, we're gonna say moderate. And for severe, it's more than 30 apneic episodes per hour. You can imagine the come out of crazy stress that the heart of this patient would be suffering from. That explains the development of hypertension, left ventricular hypertrophy. And a lot of these patients, because of excessive daytime sleepiness, because the physical activity becomes lesser, so they tend to put up weight, and that would be one of the reasons why higher incidence of type 2 diabetes can be seen in these patients. You can consider this collapsed airway as a deflated car tire. And now if you need to get this tire off from the back of the throat, there are two approaches that can be used. One is we can use a CPAP, which is widely acceptable, or there's a newer approach available that is called as hypoglossal nerve stimulation. So if you know somebody who's having obstructive sleep apnea, what you can advise that person is to use a stop bang questionnaire. This stop bang questionnaire can be remembered by you as a medical student for S for snoring causing sleep interruption, T would be for tiredness, that's daytime sleepiness due to repeated cortical arousals. O is observed apnea during sleep. P is for pressure. B is for body mass index more than 35. A is age more than 50 years of age. N would be for neck circumference, which is more than 40 centimeter. And G would be for gender, that would be male. Thanks for watching and keep watching this space for more informative videos.